Hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to, to speak. I'd like to present a, um, uh, a project with uh, Drew Sutherland. And this is all about computing other factors um, of curves. So in order to motivate that talk, I'll start with recalling um, a definition that you will find in any, um, any graduate student uh, book on elliptic curves, namely Silverman's. So if you fix an elliptic curve over Q, then its L function is given as a product, an Euler product, um, of Euler factors. So those are the, the, the factors I'm interested in, where where the Euler factor itself is given by a formula which depends on the reduction type of the curve at a prime p. So either is going to be 1 minus a p t plus p t squared, and this is if p is a prime of good reduction, or it's going to be 1 minus t, 1 plus t, or 1, and this is if the reduction is split multiplicative. This is when you have a node and the tangents at that node are defined over FP. Uh, this is if non-split multiplicative. This time the tangents of the nodes are defined over FP squared, so they are permuted by Frobenius. And this is if the reduction is additive, namely the reduced curve has a cusp at P. So of course, at P. And <coughs> in the case of good reduction, I've introduced this notation AP, and this is P plus 1 minus the number of points over FP on the, redu on the reduced curve E. So <coughs> computationally, this is a very useful definition because it splits the computation of the uh, L function in several cases. Each of them we are able to detect, namely if you have a uh, Tate's algorithm will tell you which case you are in. And once you know which case you are, at most you are in a case of good reduction, in which case you need to compute the number of points on your curve. So you do a computation over FP, and you can, you can, you can obtain um, your, your Euler factor. So at the moment, we have a large database of such L functions for elliptic curves over Q, but also over uh, number fields. And this allows for several checks. So typically, we check BSD, the Birch and Swinton Dyer conjecture, but other, uh, other checks as well. And it also feeds the fact that we can use this database also create um, the possibility to make some experiments. Now, what's happening if uh, you consider curves of higher genera? So in this particular case, um, there is a growing interest in higher genera uh, curves. For example, genus 2 curves, our database is starting to grow. And this is because we had more and more theoretical interest in higher genera curves. This led to more computational abilities, and we're, we're in, a in a circle that, that feeds in. So the database is growing, but as you may imagine, it's, it gets really difficult to compute such objects if the genus of the curve is high. And the reason we started um, this project is because of this particular case. So the goal of this project was to compute other factors. of genus 2 curve in this particular reduction type. So of a genus 2 curve, C 
C over Q at an odd prime P where C has bad reduction while its Jacobian has good reduction. Okay, so that's the, that's the object I'll be interested in uh, today. And why is this uh, a case of interest at the moment? So it's the first occurrence of this mixed reduction type. Okay, gen genus 1 doesn't have this, genus 2, this is the first time you can see a difference between the reduction of the curve and the reduction of the Jacobian. So first occurrence of a mix reduction type. And as such, uh, it brings a lot of interest. We are interested in more and more examples um, of such a curves. And uh, the second problem is, so we'd like to have a big database of those curves. But the problem is that the current algorithms Uh, so, to my knowledge, Pari and Magma, they are either wrong or very slow. So, are either returning the wrong factor or they're expensive. So it is problematic because uh, if we want to grow, if we want a database as furnished as the one we have for elliptic curves, say, we are going to need uh, an algorithm that is faster so that we can have more and more curves. So what's happening here is that um, since, since these algorithms have been implemented, there were some theoretical development. And because of these developments, we can now improve those algorithms. And this is, this is what we've, uh, we've tried to do here. So since the last implementation, um, new theory, and so better algorithms. And by better, better I mean um, uh, faster in a well-defined uh, way uh, and also provably right. So um, the method and the algorithm I'd like to present I think has two advantages. Um, it's fast and also you can generalize this approach. At the moment, we've just coded this case, but there are more uh, reduction cases that can be dealt this way, and also higher genera. Okay, so it it can be generalized uh, in reduction types and genera. However, I should mention that I don't think this is the last. Uh, word of this method. Um, the, the, the method we're using here, and I'll, I'll come back to this, uses um, cluster pictures of curves in order to, um, to compute these factors. But um, I'd like to mention the work of uh, Tim Dokshitzer and Simone Muselli because I think in this particular um, problem, uh, they have a way to compute regular models of curves that could cover uh, a vast majority of cases for any genera and any reduction type. So it, I think essentially um, maybe this, if it's not implemented yet, but I believe that this will be probably the, the, the best way around, at least at the moment. So this is for more, maybe more generality more general cases. Okay. So what I'd like to do with this talk is to explain 
how we go on computing other factors for curves and explain our method us using cluster pictures and the steps that we're using in order to make clear how one can compute those, uh, those factors. Um, okay, so the first step to do this is to understand how one can compute those, uh, those factors and this boils down to counting points on some reduced curve and this is just, um, this is very linked to the zeta functions of curves uh, over fp. And so let me remind you that the zeta function of a curve over a finite field is this generating function where you count the number of points over fpn for all n, tn over n. So strictly speaking, the zeta function is the function you get when you plug p to the minus s here, but I'm, I'm going to use this one only. So what happens at primes of good reductions So at prime of good, good reductions, we have uh, what's a, a, an established theorem now, but it's still referred in the literature as veil conjectures. And I'm going to extract only what I need from it. So let's C over FP uh, be a smooth curve. of genus G, then, okay, I'm going to, continue here, then zeta function of C is given as a rational function where explicitly This is 1 minus t, 1 minus p t, and p1 of t is an integral polynomial of degree 2g, where the alpha j's are algebraic numbers of absolute value square root of p. So this is the Riemann hypothesis part. There is also a functional equation part, which is useful computationally, but I'm not going to uh, go into this. And let me first do an example to explain why this is related to the problem at hand. Oh, maybe I want to keep this. Let me just... Can this work at the same time? Okay. And we want this one. Okay. So, as an example, let's take an elliptic curve again. And let's choose a prime of good reduction. Then if we compute the zeta function of the reduced curve, we are going to need to count points over fp to the n. And because of uh, the description of P1 of T I have, I can choose two alpha, so let's say alpha one, one minus alpha two T over one minus T, one minus PT. Okay, so 
I'm going to do this in great details because I'm going to reuse this after. If now I apply logarithm on both sides, I do obtain uh, that this sum is now equal to and then of 1 minus alpha 1 t to t minus <coughs> 1 minus t minus p t. And then if we use 1 minus r t, so you can use the um, formula for ln of 1 minus rt to just plug in this, um, this formula and extract the coefficients of t to the n to get that the number of points over fp to the n is p to the n plus 1 minus alpha 1 to the n minus alpha 2 to the n, okay, which is uh, when n is equal to 1, gives you that the number of points over fp of your curve is p plus 1 minus um, alpha 1 minus alpha 2. So from here, if you remember how we defined the Euler factor on the left and my uh, number ap, this tells me um, that ap so recall that AP was P plus 1 minus the number of points. And recall as well that um, these were, so the sum is now AP and the product is P. So this gives me that P1 of T is just 1 minus APT plus PT squared. So we came back to notice that P1 of T in the definition of the zeta function is my Euler factor. Okay, and that's precisely how one computes those factors um, at the moment. Namely, we count points up to a certain uh, n, and then we feed this generating function, and we simply just multiply what we find by these two factors. So this is the good reduction case, but we're interested in cases of bad reduction, and of course, uh, this is uh, a lot difficult, a lot more difficult in the case of bad reductions. So maybe just um, to summarize, so in case of good reduction, we got the formula for our Euler factor, which was P1 of t. This was just the zeta function. Um, times 1 minus t, 1 minus pt. And this was p naught of t, and this was p2 of t. Okay. So, we, at the moment, what we've done was to take a curve of good reduction, probably take a good model, as in minimal, reduce it, and count points. That's, that's the idea. But if we, have good, if we have bad reduction at a prime, it's not clear that the model we're given is going to be the right one to count points on. And sometimes it will work computationally, but most of the time it will not. So what's happening? We still want to count points because there is no other way we, we can compute those factors otherwise. The right answer is to count points on the right um, object, namely the special fiber of a minimal regular model for that curve. So, at primes of bad reduction, and so it's a very deep theorem, um, which uses uh, so this is Gross and Decay cohomology theory. plus uh, theory of neural models. If you'd like to see um, a proof of this, 
uh, at least a sketch proof, there is a paper of Bao and Wevers where you will be able to find some the steps of the proofs and the references. So, as I said, um, if you have a curve, um, let's say, over Q at a prime of bad reduction, then if you take a, let's take it minimal if we don't do, if we do higher genus uh, than, than one, regular model for C over QP um, with special fiber C bar over FP, then the zeta function of the special fiber of the curve is actually what, what you want to compute. Namely, this is LPCT, your Euler factor, divided by P0 of T times P2 of T. So, what's happening here? It's essentially the same statement as in the good reduction case. This time, P0 of T and P2 of T are not, no longer fixed like they were in the case of the good reduction. One has to compute, P0 of t will be uh, 1 minus t all the time in case of, of curves, but P2 of t will vary and it will depend on the action of Frobenius on the special fiber and the special fiber itself as well. So we will have to compute that as well. But uh, I should say, um, behind the scenes, this is really, those are um, the, um, the action of Frobenius on the H0 et al cohomology group of the curve, of the special fiber, H2 et al, and this one will be H1 et al. But I don't think it's necessary to go into these details to understand what, we, what we've been doing. Uh, okay, so I'd like to do an example of bad reduction. Okay. So this time, let's have a look at, again, an elliptic curve to start with, but um, I'll take a prime of split multiplicative reduction and I want uh, I4, so Kodaira type I4. So the special fiber in this case looks like this. I've got four genus zero curves. So these are genus zero, multiplicity one, and uh, because I chose them to be, I chose the reduction type to be split, those are all defined over FP. In this particular case, P0 of t is 1 minus t, while P2 of t, this is going to be 1 minus pt to the 4. Each P1 here will contribute a factor of 1 minus pt. And now I need to compute my zeta function. So. Um, to compute this, I need a number of points on my special fiber over fp to the n for all n. And now I can just count. I have four p1s. Each of them will contribute pn plus one points. 
I'll have four of them, but I counted twice my four intersection points, so minus four. So I have four to p to the n points uh, over fp to the n, which I plug inside uh, this. to get so I'll use 1 minus pt and this is just 1 over 1 minus pt to the 4 okay so this was my computation okay so in particular if I put it all together, I get that my zeta function was 1 minus pt to the 4. And this is equal to p1t over 1 minus t, 1 minus pt to the 4. And I do get what I wanted, namely that my Euler factor is 1 minus t. Okay. So now, let's do the case that we're interested in, namely a genus 2 curve of, good, of bad reduction at, um, at p while its Jacobian has good reduction at t. Okay, so let's take a genus 2 curve. Um, P of a bad reduction for C. And good reduction for Jack C. So because I have two hypotheses, I can understand what my special fiber look like. So Jack C has good reduction. So in particular, this forces my special fiber, the special fiber of my curve, to be of two types. So special fiber um, C bar over fp of the minimal regular model for c over qp to be either either it's good reduction as well so it's a genus 2 curve over fp or it could also be a product of two elliptic curves. The product being defined over FP. But I have an extra hypothesis that tells me that C has bad reduction. So in particular, it forces my special fiber to be a product. So let me draw it over there. So one very simple question. Are you, talk, are you talking about C or, or, or about J? So for example, here you have a genus 2 curve, and then you have a product of two elliptic curves. Yes. The first one has dimension 1, and the second one has dimension 2. So the Jacobian. OK. Yeah, the Jacobian. So of course, I'm talking about the L function of the curve, but it is also the L function of its Jacobian. So the, the, what I'm really, I don't know if I can tell what I'm really trying to compute. I'm interested in both. I want to know 
DL function for both reasons, for the curve and for the Jacobian. But my starting point, because what I don't want to do is to compute things on the Jacobian. I'd like to compute everything on the curve, if it makes sense. So I'm saying, so C is a genus two curve, which has bad reduction at P and good reduction at Jack C. And then this one, so Jack C has good reduction. The, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't see the... You have two bullet points, and the first yeah. bullet point is about the curve, and the second bullet point is about the immediate surface. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Um, yeah, uh, so what I'm trying to say is that if you look at the special fiber of the minimal regular model of the, Jacob, of the genus 2 curve, it's either a genus 2 curve over FP, and that's going to be genus 2, or a product of two elliptic curves. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. I, it's, I think it's my mistake. I keep saying product, and I shouldn't. And the, the, the conclusion here, because the curve must have bad reduction, is that it cannot be that picture here. The special fiber must be a union of two elliptic curve. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so so the special fiber is going to look like this, and as you said, they intersect transversely. There are two cases here. They could be both defined over FP, or they could be both defined over FP squared and permuted by Galois. For this example, I'm going to assume that they are defined over fp, but one can do the same thing if they are defined over fp squared. So those are genus 1 curves and their multiplicity 1. OK, so again, in this case, p0 of t is going to be 1 minus t, and p2 of t, each component will contribute 1 minus pt again, so this is 1 minus pt squared. Last, we need to count points on those curves. And for this, I'm going to set up notation because we know those are elliptic curves and we've, we've seen earlier um, the definition uh, of their Euler factor, so I'm going to set up those Euler factors to be 1 minus alpha 1 t, alpha i t, 1 minus beta i t for i being 1 and 2. So those are my two curves, which means that if I want to count points on my curves um, e i over f p n, this is going to be p to the n plus 1 minus uh, alpha i n minus beta i n for i is 1 and 2, which means that if I want to count the points on my special fiber, c bar over p, well, c bar over fp to the n for all n, this is going to be twice this, 2p to the n plus 2 minus alpha 1 n minus beta 1 to the n minus alpha 2 to the n minus beta 2 to the n, minus 1, because I counted the intersection point twice. And again, I do the same computation as above to obtain that my zeta function 
is going to be uh, so 1 minus alpha 1 t every one of those will contribute a 1 minus alpha 1 t 1 minus beta 1 t 1 minus alpha 2 t 1 minus beta 2 t over uh, the 2 p to the n will give me 1 minus p t squared where uh, the 1 will give me 1 minus t. And so the conclusion here is clear. Since my numerator is my um, Euler product, my Euler factor, sorry, and this is clearly the Euler factor of E1 and the Euler factor of E2. So we've established that if we want to understand the Euler factor of these curves, one needs to count points on those two elliptic curves. So in this particular case, the Euler factor of the curve is the Euler factor of E1 times the Euler factor of E2. So we are down to counting points on elliptic curves. OK, so here is, um, I guess, the bulk of the problem. So we, you probably guessed this before. Because the special fiber has this shape, one has to count points there. The problem is how to, uh, how to access those models for E1 and E2. And at the moment, um, magma, who, tends to, who gives the right answer but takes time, blows up the curve. And uh, depending on the curve and depending on the special fiber, that can take quite a while. So um, what we do is to shortcut the blow up. We use cluster pictures, as I'm about to present, to take the only manipulation that we need to extract those, uh, those curves, rather than doing the full blow up, which is a lot more expensive. So to do this, I'm going to introduce cluster pictures. And um, essentially, What I'm saying here is that the problem of computing those Euler factors is really just down to uh, computing a minimal regular model for, for those curves. Um, and it turns out that this, in this particular case, is, is a very good tool uh, to do that. So rather than just throwing the definition here, um, I'd like to just make a, a simple observation that should help you understand why these uh, are the right object to look at. So again, uh, let's keep using this elliptic curve case because it's quite nice and simple. Let me write it this way. I'm going to define three roots. And let's take this model to be minimal. And my prime is going to be odd. OK, so there are three cases, essentially. If, if the curve has good reduction at p, then p does not divide the discriminant. Now, if you remember that the discriminant of the curve is the square of the product of the differences of the root, okay, you can see the discriminant this way. So in particular, it means that the valuation of the differences of the roots is zero for all difference. So, this is zero in case of, of good reductions. Okay, now say it's uh, a prime of multiplicative reduction. So, this time p divides the discriminant, and the reduced curve has a node. In particular, this means that two of those roots are going to uh, reduce to the same element over fp. So this can be written, say, I'm going to choose alpha and beta. 
the valuation of alpha minus beta is going to be n for some n non-zero, but at the same time, the valuation of alpha minus gamma and beta minus gamma must be zero. Otherwise, we would have a cusp. OK? And now, if I consider the last case, let's say it has additive reduction at p. And I, just for simplicity, I'm going to want uh, potentially good. Then the reduced curve has a cusp, meaning that my three roots collapse to the same element over fp. So the valuation of the differences are all the same. And this is n for some n. OK. So from there, first we can see that we kind of recover all the cases that I uh, showed at the beginning when we uh, defined the Euler factors. And we can identify by just looking at the valuation of the differences in which case we are. And actually, we could also do potentially multiplicative if we wanted. So what I'm trying to hint at he here is to say that um, it is relevant to uh, keep the information of the valuation of the differences of the roots in the case of a hyperelliptic curve. And relevant in many ways, and in particular if you want, um, if you want to understand the reduction type of the curve you're looking at. And as it turns out, if the curve is semi-stable, this information can really give you an explicit description of, um, of a minimal regular model and its special fiber. So with the knowledge of the roots themselves, the leading term of the curve, and the uh, valuation of the differences, you can really explicitly describe uh, a minimal regular model if the curve is semi-stable. So we collect this information uh, and we create a picture of piadic disks that cut the, the roots in the following way. So let's see over QP be a hyperelliptic curve. Uh, P an odd prime. And let's say my model will be um, of that, that shape. So I'm creating a set of roots, R and then a leading term CF, then a cluster of roots is a non-empty uh, subset S of the full set of roots of the form um, it's a disk intersected with the real set of roots for some disk D. Given with um, a center in QP bar and a radius in the rationals. And we recall um, the, what we call that the depth of a of a of a cluster. It is going to be um, the minimum between uh, the minimum valuation between all the roots in the cluster um, minus r prime. So I'll give you an example.
So if we go back to if we go back to uh, to this here, in the case A, I had three roots: alpha, beta, gamma, and if I create my cluster here, then there is just one cluster, namely the full set of roots, and the valuation of the differences is zero. So that's my picture for good reduction. Then in case of multiplicative reduction, I actually have two clusters, namely a little one between alpha and beta because their valuation is uh, n, the difference the valuation of their difference is n, while the valuation of the difference between alpha and gamma and beta and gamma is zero. So that's my picture in terms of uh, multiplicative reduction. And additive, as you can guess, I'll have one full, uh, I have one cluster, namely the full set of roots, and this time the depth is n. So by just looking at this, um, at these pictures, you can clearly identify which case you are in. Um, and of course, there is more than this, and I, I'm not going to go into much more details, but I'd like to say that this offers a combinatorial way to understand your, your reduction type. Now that you have a hyperelliptic curve, you just consider their roots, and then you start looking at which type of clusters can occur for a given reduction type. And one then Genus by genus, one can classify the reduction types using those, uh, those clusters. And as I said earlier, if you have uh, the knowledge of the roots, you can give an explicit description for the model, the minimal regular model, and its special fiber. And this is precisely what we need here, and that's what we are going to use. So I'm going to st state the, the theorem we're actually using in this particular case. So this is due to... Um, okay, so if the Jacobian of a curve C has good reduction, well, it's not if, it's really the Jacobian has good reduction if and only if the extension you get when you adjoin the full set of roots to QP is unramified. And all the clusters in the cluster picture of the curve have an odd number of roots inside. So they're odd, meaning that they have an odd number of roots uh, inside, plus some depth conditions um, which are, are not essential here. But in particular, there is a straight corollary from here. In our case, so when you have a genus 2 of mixed reduction, namely good for the Jacobian but bad for the curve, this theorem here tells you which exactly cluster you can expect. So namely, you could have five roots That's good reduction, so that's not going to work for us. But we need an other odd cluster, namely this one. So that's case one. And then you could have six roots with a cluster of size three here. You could have six roots with two clusters of size three, or you could have six roots with one size five and one size three inside. But this is what, this is it. If your curve is of this type, then its cluster picture is going to look like this. So we're back to a classification which computationally is, is great because once you give me a curve like this, I just need to identify which cluster it is, and then I use the explicit description of the minimal regular model to extract as I want the two elliptic curves, and I can't point on them. So essentially, this is the, the algorithm we used. There are two difficulties here, um, and I'll, I'll show, I think I have still five minutes. Okay, then I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick example to explain what are the steps. 
um, because I don't want to uh, to fully write the algorithm because I think an example is, is clear enough. Okay, so let me take This is a, a product here, right? Where this is the genus two curve. Now let's say p is bigger than five, and let's find out which case we are in. So if we reduce mod p, this is just y squared is x minus one cubed and x minus two cubed. So essentially, we are in this case three here. So we have. A picture like this, a first cluster which is centered at 1, while this one is centered at 2. It has depth 4, it has depth 2. And as you would do if you would do a full blow up, you'd like the first thing you do is to find a singularity and center it at zero. And this, algorithmically, it's expansive. Depending on where your uh, root lives, it may force you to work over some, some extension of QP, and we would like to avoid this at all cost. And you can actually do the shifting. So the first step would be to, um, at s equal to 1, shift singularity to zero. And to do this, instead of computing the root and working over some extension of QP, we do some uh, Ansel's lifting. So you reduce mod P, you reduce mod P squared, P cubed, until you have enough precision to be able to make the shift. And it turns out that the reduction uh, must be mod P to the N, where N is bounded by the depth of the cluster. So this is actually quite fast. So once you've shifted, so this is involving Ansel's lifting, so up to p to the n when n uh, is at most the depth of the cluster in question. Once you've done this, basically the rest is quite trivial in the sense that if I shift at 0, then my new curve um, looks like this, and in order to deal with this, to get one chart of my, um, of my model, namely what will reduce to a first elliptic curve, I just need to do this change of variable. So x will go to x p squared, and y will go to y uh, p cubed. And if you do this, then you will get the first chart, which will look like x, x minus 1, x plus 1, times x p squared plus 1, x p squared plus 1 minus p4, x p squared plus 1 plus p4, which, if you reduce, gives you y squared is equal to minus x, x minus 1, x plus 1. And this is here your first elliptic curve. You need to make it monic, and that gives you the first elliptic curve. Then, of course, you do the same thing at the singularity x is equal to 2. You also shift. You also absorb the, the power of p you need. You get this second chart, which you reduce, and that will give you your second elliptic curve. So from there, you simply count, and you, you then obtain your, uh, your Euler factor. 
So I think essentially this is the algorithm we have, uh, and that's the reason why we say uh, it's, it's really fast, because as you see, worst case scenario, the two elliptic curves are defined over fp squared, in which case you need to work over a quadratic extension of, QP, of q, sorry, of q, and that's the most expensive you can get. So the rest is quite uh, uh, cheap computation, computationally. Okay, thank you very much. So one has five roots. But, but if you have a rational root, you can make it change variables well. to get the degree five, right? So of course. So uh, well, we, we try to actually avoid this case. Uh, we start, given a, a, a genus two curve, we'll make it uh, degree six so that we didn't have to implement this case. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so the, the idea then is that instead of having to find the root in QP, mm. you just compute the curve on P, and this is, that's enough well. for computing the AP. That's the yeah. main idea. Yeah, I think the deeper is the, the cluster, the more answers lifting you need to do, but it's still computations over FPN for some n, so it's still quite fast. Yes? So out of these four pictures, the fourth one would be more complicated to do? It's not more complicated, and there, there are still the same amount of, uh, of, of steps to do. Uh, it's probably more complicated to see where the curves are. Here it's pretty clear that if you dig enough, those three roots will give you one curve, those three roots will give you one curve. In this case, it's a bit more tricky. You, you need to do just a different manipulation, but in terms of, of uh, number of steps, you don't have more steps. So is it tricky to find the change of variables which will give you the, the curve? I don't think, no, no not tricky. So in particular, so in, the, in this paper here, um, given a, a, a picture, uh, we give a formula for how to uh, find the components. It turns out that each uh, relevant clusters, not all clusters are relevant for the model, but all relevant clusters uh, correspond to one component of the spatial fiber. So once you understand this relation, uh, you just apply a formula basically. And if you, want to try, if you want to train yourself, you just take one of those pictures and you do the blow up yourself and you will see precisely the relationship between the cluster and the component you get. And no more questions. Then <coughs> we'll still have the next speaker, that's Thanksgiving. Thank you.